Vitamin D has often been in the news over the last few years. It's a vitamin that's made in our bodies when sunlight hits our skin. It's good for our bones, our muscles, and may even prevent diseases like multiple sclerosis and cancer. And now research from the United States, which has followed the health of thousands of people over many years, has confirmed that low vitamin D levels are associated with a higher risk of dying prematurely. Even after we adjusted for age and all the other traditional cardiovascular risk factors, they had a 26% increased risk of all-cause mortality at the end of the study, that they were more likely to die over the nine years of follow-up uh, compared to individuals who had higher levels of vitamin D. The question is, what were these people with low vitamin D levels dying from? It's known that heart attacks and cancer are more common, but what about stroke? particularly in both white and black Americans with low vitamin D levels. With low levels, less than 15 nanograms per ml, the whites had a two-fold increased risk of having a fatal stroke over the next 14 years. Now, to our surprise, and this was sort of contrary to our hypothesis going into the study, we did not find the same relationship of low vitamin D levels with stroke in blacks. And although blacks did have a higher rate of having a fatal stroke compared to whites, they were actually a 60% increased risk of a fatal stroke compared to whites, even after we adjusted for, you know, again, hypertension, diabetes, those usual factors. But we could not blame that on vitamin D. We couldn't find that racial differences in vitamin D levels explain this excess risk. We know that blacks have a higher rate of vitamin D insufficiency because the darker skin um, coloring, the, the melanin in the skin, acts as a natural sunscreen to block the UVB synthesis of vitamin D in the skin. So they have much lower levels of vitamin D. And while all this seems to blow the link between vitamin D and stroke out of the water, it may not. You see, what's a normal vitamin D level for people with black skin may actually be lower than for white people which explains all sorts of things. They may actually be a little bit more resistant to the adverse effects of low vitamin D levels, that even though they have lower levels, they're less likely to have fractures and osteoporosis. So they may have developed an adaptive resistance to these adverse effects of, of low vitamin D. So does this apply to all people with dark skin? not just African Americans. Anybody of darker skin from these populations all over the world are more likely to have vitamin D insufficiency. In the United States, new guidelines have lowered the level of vitamin D at which supplementation should begin. But they fell short of confirming a link between heart disease and stroke and low vitamin D levels. For that, we'll have to await the results of clinical trials of vitamin D supplementation. The level that the Americans advise supplementation is 20 nanograms per ml. All of these studies that I've quoted about low vitamin D levels and cardiovascular risk, these were really at the ex extreme of vitamin D deficiency, levels less than 18, levels less than 15. And we actually didn't see an increased risk of uh, levels between 15 and 30 nanograms per ml, even though this has been widely considered insufficient. And maybe while low vitamin D levels are very harmful, maybe we don't need to replete as high as we thought. There is some data suggesting that high vitamin D levels actually may be harmful too. We know that vitamin D toxicity, which is very rare, you know, occurs at levels you know, greater than 150 nanograms per ml um, and can cause uh, lots of problems with hypercalcemia, high calcium in the blood, and maybe calcification of the vessels. But there may actually be a trend towards increased risk even with levels above 60 or 90 nanograms per ml with increased risk of kidney stones. The trouble is that blood tests for vitamin D are notoriously unreliable. I, I do use the blood tests. I use, you know, try to use an accredited lab, but I do still think that if you want to know someone's vitamin D status, that the best way to measure this is really the blood levels. If you're thinking of taking vitamin D supplements and are expecting me to make a recommendation about the dose, I ain't going to do it because it's very personal. It's according to your own circumstances. So the smart thing is to have a chat to your GP about it. Mm -hmm.